Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India-France hold bilateral air exercises in Desert State. Reeling from floods, Pakistan seeks climate compensation debt relief. And Sikh devotees celebrate birth anniversary of founder of Sikhism across India. And now for all the details. Indian and French Air Forces on Tuesday took part in joint air exercises at Air Force Station of Jyotpur in India's desert state of Rajasthan. The joint exercise aims to further operational ties between the Indian and French air combats while boosting defense ties. Indian and French Air Forces carried out joint air drills at Air Force Station of Jodhpur in India's desert state of Rajasthan on Tuesday. The seventh edition of Garud 7 bilateral air exercise between the two countries comes after a two-year pandemic lull. It aims to further operational ties between the Indian and French air combats while boosting defense ties. During the exercise, French Air and Space Force Chief Stephen Mill flew an Indian-Russian origin Su-30 fighter jet. Meanwhile, Indian Air Chief Marshal Vivek Ram Chaudhary took off in a French Dassault Rafale fighter aircraft. We are here to interrupt, uh, uh, to fly together with, uh, with Indian air crew. Uh, sometimes with simple acts we can do a lot. For instance, we talked this morning about uh, uh, having the same code word on the radio which sometimes are not exactly the same, but doing this type of exercise, at the end of the week, we are able to understand each other during the flight. So this is very important to be able to do that from time to time, to be able to fly and to operate together. France participated with a contingent of four Rafale jets, one A330 multi-role tanker transport aircraft and 220 personnel. India had Rafale and Su-30 jets, an Mi-17 helicopter, light combat aircraft Tejas and a light combat helicopters in its arsenal. Garud is a joint air exercise that started in 2003 and is conducted alternatively in France and India. The exercise will conclude on November 12. Well, residents in the Indian capital of New Delhi are worried about their lungs as toxic smog has enveloped the city of 20 million. A thick blanket of toxic smog covers the capital as cold, heavy air traps, construction dust, vehicle emissions and smoke from crop stubble burning in neighboring states, causing problems for the residents. Toxic smog hovering over India's capital, New Delhi, has left residents worried about their lungs as they are being exposed to the harmful substances that have engulfed the city. A thick layer of smog envelops the city in winter as cold, heavy air traps, construction dust, vehicle emissions and smoke from crops stubble burning in neighbouring states, causing a surge in respiratory illness among its 20 million people. जब आप अब जब आप कई बार आप अपने सांस को क्लियर करते हो जब आप स्पिट करते हो तो एक ब्लैक स्प्यूटम करके निकलता है वो जबकि नॉर्मली आप करते तो वाइट आपको पता लगता है कि रोड में ये हालत है अभी लंग्स के अंदर क्या हालत होगी तो बल्कि साइक्लिस्ट कम्युनिटी में तो हमारा आजकल ये बोल रहे हैं कि Residents in the capital city woke to another hazy morning with grey skies on Tuesday and the air quality showed readings above 200 and 300 in different parts of the city. Primary schools were set to reopen in the city this week and curbs were lifted on certain construction activities. Air quality could worsen later this week, the system of air quality and weather forecasting and research said on its website. 
And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif at the COP27 climate conference in Egypt said that Islamabad would need debt relief and would seek compensation for climate damage as it recovers from catastrophic floods that cost the country some $30 billion. Devastating floods brought by record monsoon rains and glacial melt in northern mountains killed more than 1,700 people and affected 33 million in Pakistan in August and September. Pakistan's Prime Minister said that his country would need debt relief and would seek compensation for climate damage as it recovers from catastrophic floods that cost the country some 30 billion US dollars. Speaking at the COP27 climate conference alongside UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, he said that Pakistan's escalating public debt is hampering its recovery. He said millions of people are going into winter without shelter or livelihood and women and children are looking to us to protect their basic needs. In my country, Chekjan, millions of people are going into winter without the shelter or livelihood. That is their fundamental right. Women and children are still looking to us to protect their basic needs while entire villages are seeking to secure a precarious future with all of us such recovery hinging on a flow of resources that we are unable to guarantee. Guterres, who visited Pakistan in September to tour the flood damage, urged international financial institutions like the World Bank and to leaders at the upcoming G20 summit in Indonesia to reform policies that govern debt relief and concessional loan decisions so as to help middle-income countries like Pakistan. Devastating floods in August and September, which killed more than 1,700 people, have added to the country's woes, with massive damage to standing crops, subsequently keeping the food and fuel pricing soaring. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves with the central bank now stand at 7.4 billion US dollars, barely enough to cover a month's imports. And the brewing discontent among the PTI cadre of Pakistan-administered Kashmir was evident recently after the party's workers staged a demonstration over ticket allocation for the upcoming local body polls. They raised concern that the locals in the region are not even allowed to elect public representatives of their choice as the party leadership in Islamabad chooses their own favourite candidates. <laughs> The brewing discontent among the Pakistan Tehreek and Saaf PTI cadre of Pakistan administered Kashmir was evident recently after the party's workers demonstrated over ticket allocation for the upcoming local body polls. They voiced concern that deserving PTI workers were ignored while only favorite candidates were picked up by the party leadership in Islamabad to fight the poll. They expressed that this policy has done no good to the local residents over the years who are suffering due to zero development and no welfare schemes as the chosen candidates do not actually represent them. Number two, मेरे ये तजवीज चल रही है हर दो पार्टीज के अंदर और अल्लाह ताला हर दो पार्टी के लोगों को हुज़र रखा हम तीनों की और आपने लोगों की बड़ी कदर करते हैं मेरे पास पीपल पार्टी के दोस्त आए कि आ जाओ जी मैंने उनसे मोहलत मांगी मेरे पास नून ली के दोस्त आए आ जाओ जी मैंने उनसे मोहलत मांगी वो इसलिए कि मैं आपने लोगों से आपने इन मुतासरा दोस्तों से जिन की बेजती हुई है दो दिन टिकट इधर दो दिन टिकट उधर टिकट क्या कोई जन्नत की टिकट है मुस्तरात करते हैं हम टिकट को Lack of basic amenities has always been issue of concern in the illegally occupied region but the locals accuse that the stooge government that works at Islamabad's behest has always ignored their plight as they are not considered at par with citizens of Pakistan they lament they are not even allowed to elect public representatives of their choice.
And in news from Afghanistan, former president of Afghanistan has attacked Pakistan for mistreating Afghan refugees who crossed the border after the Taliban took over the war-torn country. He has urged the United Nations and human rights organizations to monitor the situation and provide the Afghan refugees with better living conditions. Former Afghan President Hamid Karzai on Monday attacked Pakistan for mistreating Afghan refugees who crossed the border after the Taliban took over the country and urged the Pakistan administration to treat the refugees at per international laws and human rights values. Karzai, citing media reports, said on Twitter that over 1,100 Afghan refugees, including women and children, were arrested and imprisoned in the Sindh state of Pakistan. He called on the United Nations and human rights organizations to monitor the situation and provide the Afghan refugees with better living conditions. The former president has been criticizing the Taliban government regarding curbing women's rights and has been demanding the Taliban to form an inclusive government. He also expressed concern over the ban on girls' education imposed by the Taliban and said such a step could further push the country backwards. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. And Buddhist monks in India's holy Bodhgaya town held a special prayer ceremony this past weekend to pray for world peace. Around 300 monks and nuns from different parts of the world offered prayers for peace to prevail and the welfare of humanity. Buddhist monks in holy Bodhgaya town in India's Bihar state held a special prayer ceremony to pray for world peace this past weekend. Bodhgaya is the place where Gautam Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment under what is known as the Bodhi tree. Around 250 to 300 monks and nuns from different parts of the world offered prayers for peace to prevail and the welfare of humanity. But the scriptures describe Bodhgaya as the navel of the earth. Uh, today about uh, 250 to 300 monks and nuns and attended the ceremony. I also request to, this, uh, to them to pray for world peace, you know the Russia-Ukraine war, so as soon as war can be uh, stopped and every people can uh, stay peaceful, healthy and also all be peaceful, uh, we pray on this ceremony. Around a million pilgrims and tourists visit the city every year to see the Mahabodhi temple and also the tree under which Lord Buddha attained enlightenment. And the Sikh devotees offered prayers at the famous Golden Temple and their places of worship across India to celebrate the 553rd birth anniversary of Sikhism's founder, Guru Nanak Dev. The devotees took holy dips, lit candles and lamps and pondered upon the spiritual leader's teachings to mark the occasion. Sikh devotees across India celebrated the 553rd birth anniversary of the founder of their faith, Guru Nanak, as they offered prayers and lit candles on Tuesday. Hundreds of devotees gathered at the famous Golden Temple in northern Amritsar city and took holy dips, lit lamps to mark the occasion. Sikhism originated with the birth of Guru Nanak in 1469, who was succeeded by the nine other spiritual leaders. Guru Nanak Dev Ji da Prakash Purbya. Guru Nanak Pacha ne Chaar Odasya karke Or Ais Duniya Ch Jithi Grieve Loka Te Jolum Ho Raya Si Una Da Jolum Ho Kan Lai Una Nu Jeevan Jaach Sakon Lai E Odasya Kitiya Similar scenes were witnessed in Guru Dwaras or Sikh places of worship in the capital New Delhi where devotees lit candles and also distributed sweets on the occasion. Sikhism is over 500 year old religion based on the teachings of Guru Nanak. So, Sariya Sangtai Guru Nanak Dev Ji Te Prakash Paravnu Tum Tam Na Kallai India Bharde Ni Desh Bharde Vich Manaya Ja Riya Ne. Guru Nanak Dev, the first Sikh Guru, was born in Nanka Sahib on the full moon day in the Karthik month of Hindu calendar. His birthday is celebrated as the Guru Nanak Jayanti. 
Sikhism was founded in 15th century in Punjab, an area straddling the border between Pakistan and India by Guru Nanak Dev. The majority of the Sikh population in India lives in the northern Punjab province. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.